So yeah, um, about a year and two months ago, almost exactly, uh, began the journey of the Sid stream, which you are watching right now, or at least a segment from it. Uh, and it is with a happy heart uh, that I am pulling the plug on this. Um, I will begin by saying what made me uh, uh, decide to do this. And the funny thing is, I reached the conclusion that I have to put an end to this stream last Tuesday uh, in the afternoon, about five or six hours before going live last week. Uh, and what triggered this was Mr. Beast's appearance on Joe Rogan. Here I am uh, making a joke that Mr. Beast is bigger than Joe Rogan. So by, by him going on Joe's show, he's platforming Joe. That's the joke. Uh, and it was really fascinating to watch that episode. I highly recommend it. If you, um, if you make content or if you like YouTube or if you like Mr. Beast, this is a fantastic conversation. Uh, and something that was covered, which one would expect in uh, uh, any kind of interview like this, is that Joe asked uh, what Mr. Beast's like, origin story was, how he got into YouTube and that kind of thing. And the funny thing with Mr. Beast's origin story is that technically he got lucky, but also it's not luck at all. He worked hard for it. Uh, here's what I mean. So he mentioned um, on that show that when he was, I think it was either 11 or 13 or something, when he was really young, he uploaded his first video to YouTube and it got 20,000 views. Uh, that is specifically what I'm referring to when I say that he got lucky, that his, his first video got 20,000 views. Uh, however, the, what that did was it triggered a, uh, it got him hooked basically. And he developed a magnificent obsession for YouTube. Uh, he went on to pretend to go to community college, lying to his parents about it, uh, while basically using that time to figure out how to make it on YouTube. And he was obsessed with it. And the, the, um, the cool thing is, is that he also had a circle of friends who are also obsessed with figuring out how to um, grow and get big on YouTube. So there was that mastermind effect uh, on top of it. And, uh, you know, he grew to become Mr. Beast and one of the, uh, how many, how many subscribers does he have? I'm curious. Let's find out. Almost 92 million subscribers uh, from that one video that went viral when he was in his teens to um, become a magnificent obsession. And there was something that he said that brought me to the conclusion that I have to, to uh, put an end to this stream, which is um, if you can figure out how to get 10% more people to watch your videos for 10% longer, that will... 4x your views because it's exponential it it's those two little differences will have a huge impact down the line and when i heard him say this um the first thing that i wanted to apply this to was my tarot channel um for those of you who may not be aware i've been a tarot reader for about eight years at this point and in October, I decided to practice in public with a new tarot deck that I got. And my first tarot TikTok went viral. Uh, I spoke about it on this stream, uh, and it made me realize how um, there's a there's a lot of interest for this thing that I'm skilled in doing and that I enjoy doing uh, for all sorts of reasons, which I will eventually talk about over there. Uh, and the tarot stuff combined with a project that I warned you about also when I started getting involved in it, uh, which we shall call Project X, um, 
it ended up taking um the distribution that I was aiming for ended up not being what I was hoping for. So just to illustrate with this pie chart here, uh, what I would have, what I was aiming for initially was that the tarot stuff and this stream and Project X would take up about a third of my spare time or spare mental energy each. Uh, however, um, the tarot stuff my YouTube tarot channel has shown more promise in four months than this stream has in 14 months. Um, and things, honestly, honestly, people, um, things are going so well on TikTok that it kind of makes every other platform that I'm on feel like a waste of time in comparison, especially Instagram. Holy shit. I, uh, uh, every day I wonder why I continue to use Instagram. I guess it's for the nostalgia. Uh, I basically just repost other people's stories on Instagram. And that's like 99% of what I do there. Um, and like, I enjoy consuming Instagram, uh, but posting content on it makes, it feels like it makes little to no sense to me. Anyway, Coming back to this pie chart here, as a result of uh, the promise that my YouTube channel is showing, the other one, uh, and TikTok, this wedge has been cutting into here like that. And on top of it, Project X, which by the way... Um, I am I, I feel truly honored to to be involved in this project. It's not a secret, but I it, it would feel weird to just say what it is. Uh, but let's just say that I um I get to work with someone that I've looked up to for years, uh, maybe even 10 years, uh, and to be in meetings with this guy on a regular basis, uh, and to do something for him that he needs and is right up my alley is uh, truly awesome. And another cool thing about Project X is that it's actually putting money in my pocket. Not a lot, but uh, I have other opportunities to increase how valuable I am to this project and therefore the money that gets put into my pocket as a result. So that is also cutting into uh, this wedge here. Uh, leaving this teeny tiny little sliver here. And I got to say, um, when I was covering the trucker convoy, uh, posting the trucker convoy segments unedited was a deliberate decision. This was not laziness. This was not an autopilot thing. This was a calculated decision to be quick. Um, I chose speed over quality deliberately because I think... I still think that what I had to say about that convoy was important and I needed to get it out there ASAP to, if I wanted to have a chance to steer the outcome towards, you know, something a little more positive. But I got to say, uh, even like despite the, uh, the trucker convoy stuff, uh, which I was super happy uh, to cover. It was also a historic moment. There was timing involved, all that shit. Um, it does feel like I've been on autopilot for a while as far as this stream is concerned because I am um, hyper-focused on growing on TikTok. Now, let's circle back to uh, Mr. Beast on Joe Rogan. This reminded me of <laughs> I know I never bring this guy up, but um, this reminded me of something that uh, Scott Adams uh, has said, which has been um, a keystone in my approach to life in general. So Mr. Beast was lucky enough that he developed a magnificent obsession uh, at an age where he was able to capitalize and get the the famous 10,000 hours to become like world class at something that is one way to do it however um the approach that scott adams is famous for uh 
putting forth is the talent stack approach. And I am not going to read this article uh, because I read the book uh, that he talks about the talent stack in. This is just here for your purposes if you want uh, uh, an introduction to what the talent stack is. Uh, I'm definitely going to watch this interview uh, at some point later on. But um, he doesn't say it explicitly in this blog article. Uh, however, the way he says it in his book, I, it, it was something like Scott's Law of Success. Every skill that you acquire doubles your chances to, for success. One of the main things that motivated me to start streaming on YouTube was to build that skill and add that skill to my talent stack. Um, and the, the funny thing is, um, it, it integrates this part here. At least one of the skills in your mixture should involve communication, either written or verbal. Now add whatever your passion is, and if and you have two, because that's the thing you easily put enough energy to reach the top 25%. If you have an aptitude for a third skill, perhaps business or public speaking, develop that too. So the goal is to become very good at two or more things. Um, I think I have the capacity to be uh, top 25% tarot. Um, but even if, even if I don't, it doesn't really matter because by adding skills to my talent stack, um, it doubles the odds of me finding something that I am uniquely qualified for uh, and become world-class at that. Um, and the funny thing is... My absolute top priority right now is to start live streaming on TikTok. For that, I need a thousand followers and I'm on track to do it. Um, I would like to do it faster and I am enjoying the process of figuring out how to do it faster. And one thing is for sure, once I'm able to live stream on TikTok, my experience doing this will help me enormously. Uh, and no matter what ends up happening, uh, the mere fact that I've added the skill of live streaming and all the related skills like figuring out how to use OBS Studio, figuring out proper mic technique, knowing how to set up a mic in OBS, uh, all these things, the, um, wait, ho, 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 I'll do this in real time. There you are. The fucking filter that I put on my camera to make it look better, that kind of stuff. Um, and the funny thing is, um, something that I plan on doing, because this filter is from this generic pack that I um, that I downloaded and, and picked this one, but um, I can generate a custom one for this setup, for this room, uh, which I eventually will get around to doing. Um, but all that, um, you know, these are skills that I'm very happy to have developed, and that alone makes all of this worthwhile. Another thing that uh, is difficult for me as far as this project is concerned is monetization. Um, there's no easy path to monetize with this stream, and I also have Project X, which is putting money in my pockets right now, a little bit, but still. Um, and th the thing that I had my eye on as far as monetizing this stream was concerned was to start a Patreon. I've had that on my mind for a while, uh, but the challenge in that is that, um, the best ways to make a Patreon worth paying for for people is to either have bonus content or extra access to you. So as far as bonus content is concerned, I could barely keep up with this channel on its own. So to add another job to it, uh, that wasn't going to be an option. As far as access to me is concerned, most of the people in this chat have my phone number uh, and could call me right now if they wanted to. Um, please don't. Uh, but uh, as far as increasing your access to me, I doubt that... Uh, that I, I don't have anything to offer in that regard. Hey, so something I forgot to mention last night, uh, talking about Patreon, is that although um, 
building a Patreon for my political channel doesn't seem even possible for reasons I just went into. Doing so for the tarot channel is really simple and straightforward. You know, making extra tarot readings for my patrons, uh, maybe at a certain level, you get to ask a question a month or something like that. Um, I would need to think of it in a way that is doable and scalable, but... You know, these two ideas, I threw it out with very, very little effort. It's super obvious. So that's another example that the tarot stuff has as far as monetization goes. Anyway, back to the stream. Uh, and the funny thing is, uh, as far as metrics go, it is clear that, you know, one of the main things that I wanted to do uh, that I set out to do uh, with this stream was to attract people to watch live. Um, I put a lot of thought into figuring out how to uh, get people or motivate people to show up live for the stream. Um, and it is clear that I failed at that. Um, I have like three regular chatters in my chat who are here live and two of them are close friends of mine in real life, you know? Uh, so, Hey, but the, the thing is, um, I know that my content isn't complete garbage because although I have not done a good job at convincing people to show up live at 10 PM, um, my VODs do pick up views after the fact, which suggests to me that there are people who want to watch what I'm doing. It's just that Tuesday nights at 10 isn't generally a good time for them. Uh, and also there's the fact that I'm competing with Tim Pool. Um, I, I would wager that many people who find what I do interesting also find Tim Pool interesting, and I cannot win that fight. So um, yeah, those, there were those challenges. There's another challenge too. Uh, which I have, we've seen uh, glimpses of it in one of the introduction segments, which is, I can't watch videos on stream, or at least I can't rely on it. Um, and you got to admit, if you're familiar with live streaming at all, um, not being able to watch videos on stream is a major obstacle. Um, th that's kind of, you know, the meta of live streaming, certainly on Twitch, but I would assume in general, um, it wages a lot on watching videos and reacting to them. Uh, so I'm really happy with the fact that uh, I kept on trucking. And honestly, I was planning on uh, continuing to keep on trucking. Um, the, uh, like, I enjoy this. I enjoy this enough to continue. It's just um, I need to free up some shelf space mentally and some time for uh, the tarot stuff and Project X. The funny thing is, like, with this setup, with my equipment, with my skills, I can still just record segments and make, like, videos. I plan on doing that. Um, probably not so much in the short term, but uh, I don't plan on stopping making videos for this for this channel because I like political commentary. I, I enjoy it uh, and I want to continue talking about it. And I'm definitely going to geek out on comics. Um, you know, it'd be cool to actually talk about the X-Men, which I've hinted at for 14 months at this point and have basically not said a damn word on them besides the fact that they're really cool, you know? That is basically it so it is time to wrap it up um i will tell you a story i've i've been aware of this story this is one of these stories that you hear in um self-help seminars and things like that it's a very popular story it's the zig ziglar pump handle story if you if you search, not now, but if you search for Zig Ziglar pump handle story, you can see him tell the story. But the premise of that story, which again, I've been aware of for a while, is that, um, you know, some cousin uh, had a, a well in the desert and there was a pump there. And he would start pumping the handle and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and, pumping and nothing would happen. And 
at some point he got fed up of pumping the handle and then he stopped. And when he stopped pumping the handle, one of his one of the people who lived there ran towards him and said, no, don't stop pumping. And um, the the reason why. Uh, the reason why he couldn't st uh, why it was a bad idea to stop pumping is because even though you couldn't see anything, there was water coming up the the, the pipe to pour out of the faucet and if you stop pumping the water that was there will go all the way back to the bottom and you basically have to start over from scratch um so that is the the metaphor uh the the moral of that story right and i know that uh you know, as far as whether or not this stream was a success, it is far too early to call it. Um, I was, when I started last year, I wanted to do it for at least a year. And come January of this year, I saw no reason to stop. Uh, and I was doing tarot at the time. I don't think I had launched my YouTube tarot channel, though. Uh, but yeah, it is... Um, it is far too early to call it. There's an expression that I uh, that I think of a lot, which is you have to do the right things long enough consistently. Uh, the consistency I got that down. I I have not missed a Tuesday, uh, and I've been man by the standards of streamers. I am excellent at starting on time. I there's only one stream where I started over twenty minutes late, and I had a damn good reason for it too. I say I'm plus. I say I'm pulling the plug on this stream, but really, um, the um, I would like to relaunch it at some point in the future. Um, relaunching this stream is a reward that I will give myself once the other things are in place. Um, however, I say this having no idea what the impact will be of live streaming on TikTok, because again, I think I can crush it there. Um, and I have no idea what the impact of that will be. Uh, but one thing is for sure, I fucking love shit posting on Twitter. And the part of me that loves shit posting on Twitter um, enjoys talking about the things that I talk about on this channel. So I don't think any of that is changing anytime soon. Uh, part of me can't wait for a cancel mob to come at me for some edgy tweet that I tweeted like three years ago or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'll do this ceremoniously. <laughs> and I will uh, share this. I'll, I'll give you another peek behind the curtain. This is my notion. And I am now setting the SID stream status from ongoing to someday maybe. And I will remove it from favorites. And there you go. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I do have other content on this video, including this one, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. Please click on the card right here to watch it. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. <laughs>